biggest threat to civilization, not North Korea, according to technology entrepreneur Elon Musk, but artificial intelligence. Musk kicked off his Labor Day Monday tweeting this, China, Russia, soon all countries with strong computer science, competition for AI superiority at national levels most likely cause of World War III in my opinion. But just like robots, not all tech billionaires think the same. So enter Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg. With AI especially, I'm really optimistic and I think that people who are naysayers and, and kind of try to drum up these doomsday scenarios are, um, I, I just, I don't understand it. I think it's, it's, it's really um, negative and, and in some ways I actually think it's, it's pretty irresponsible. Musk's response? Zuckerberg's understanding of the subject is limited. Ouch. But when it comes to AI, Zuckerberg looks at how it can help diagnose diseases and prevent car wrecks. Musk is afraid of the day AI gets smarter than us and we can't turn it off. I think it would be fair to say that like, not all AI futures are benign. Not, not all. Okay. Um, and, and so if you have something, if, 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 this, if we create some digital superintelligence that exceeds us in every way by a lot, um, it's very important that that be benign. The book, World Without Mind, where did that come from? It came from the fact that we're living in this world where we have these big companies and we're increasingly ceding over various aspects to, of our life to them. And so they want to automate the world for us, not just automate the way that we use, that we do, we do mechanical work or automate transportation. They're trying to automate mental functions. And we're in the process of merging with machines that we wear this technology on our wrists now. We wear it on the bridge of our glass if it's Google Glass. And if you listen to the founders of Google, they want to implant, implant Google straight into our brain. Uh, once virtual reality goes inside our brains, and that's, that'll be here by the late 2020s, uh, and basically, I mean, my brain doesn't directly feel things. There's signals going into my brain. We can actually trap those signals yeah. and actually send into the brain signals representing a virtual environment. And so the computer will actually create the environment. And then we can be virtual actors in a virtual environment uh, and do any of the things we do in real reality. And the problem is that these tools can be amazing, but we're not just merging with the tools, we're merging with the companies that run the machines. Mm. The most powerful gatekeepers ever, Four calls them. The first, second, fourth, and fifth most valuable companies on the U.S. stock market. Microsoft is third. Add them together, and they account for some 10% of the stock price of the S&P 500. We need to just be very careful in uh, how we adopt artificial intelligence and to make sure that uh, researchers don't get carried away. Because uh, sometimes what happens is a scientist can get so engrossed in their work, they don't necessarily realize the ramifications of what they're doing. Um, so I think it's important for public safety that we you know, governments keep a close eye on artificial intelligence and make sure that it does not represent a danger to the public. The primitive forms of artificial intelligence we already have have proved very useful. But I think the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Once humans develop artificial intelligence, it would take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever-increasing rate. Humans, who are limited by slow biological evolution, couldn't compete and would be superseded. With all this talk of technology, theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking, whom I'm sure you know, uh, warned this week that technology could end up ending humanity at some point. Do you share that apocalyptic view of technology? Well, I think it's something that it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, I do think we have to worry about it. I don't think it's inherent that as we create uh, super intelligence that it will necessarily always uh, have the same goals in mind that we do. You know, humans don't always have the same goal as other humans. So who gets control of the technology? How is it uh, built in? I don't think there's a need to panic, but I think the dialogue along those levels, the, the people who say, that's, let's not worry at all, I, I don't agree with that. Okay. 
Russian President Vladimir Putin recently said that the development of AI raises colossal opportunities and threats that are difficult to predict now, and agreed that whoever becomes the leader in this sphere will become the ruler of the、like、world. The, one way to think of it is: imagine we were going to be visited. You, you, imagine you're very confident that we were going to be visited by super intelligent aliens、um, in. Let's say ten years or twenty years at the most. Super intelligent, digital super intelligence will be like an alien. AI for, is one of the big benefits one gets if you have data. You know, your ability to reason over data gives you artificial intelligence. I believe we should first grab on to all of these opportunities to enhance the human experience、um, with AI, while being very clear-eyed about all of the implications. Whether it's automation that leads to jobs displacement,、uh, whether it's cyber threats,、uh, and these are all going to require not only companies like ours doing it their best work, taking a principal stance、uh, in terms of how we design things, and ultimately even. Governments and the legislative process looking at how do we make sure that with the unintended consequences of new technology are not causing us harm. There's a quote that I love from、uh, Ford Acton. He was the guy that came up with power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely,、um, which is that、uh, freedom consists of the distribution of power and despotism in its concentration. And so I think it's important if we have this incredible power of AI that it not be concentrated in the hands of a few and potentially lead to a world that we don't want.